Hey YouTube, this is Kevin Bowen of Bowen Small Engine and today I'd like to show everyone how to actually assess and repair a starter for a Briggs & Stratton Intech engine. Um, you're going to find that starters are a very common problem on Briggs. Uh, the reason being is most people will hold the starter in desperation trying to get the motor to start and really it's bowel trouble okay that they'll they'll run into um, well it's actually bowel lash but um, anyway they'll actually toast their starters like this they'll burn them completely up the windings um, commutators will even get hot but typically the armature at this point is toast it's no good um, it's not uncommon when you see this problem that this was the reason they beat on it with a hammer and shattered the magnets um, there's nothing you can do for a starter that's in this bad shape so I'm just going to set this aside and start over with some parts that I have of my own that's in uh, well my little scrap box for starters I was able to salvage a few pieces, a spring, a retainer, a washer, and a C-ring. But that's about it. Oh, and the base cap. I found a new top cap, so I figured I would you know, put it on. Well, it's not really new, but better shape than the other. I do want to note that when I took this other starter apart, the old one, I came across the helix. And you can see that that starter had really been abused. If you look, you really want to look for problems like this. If you look on this helix, you'll see there's a fracture. And I'm going to move this, and you'll actually be able to see the fracture point. If you have a helix that's in this bad of shape, don't try to reuse it, okay? Toss it. You're not doing anyone any favors if you don't. I do want to mention that there are two types of starter gears, or pinions is what Briggs calls them. Uh, Briggs call them pinions, but like I said, I've heard them called helixes, or I'm sorry, I've heard them called uh, bendixes. Um, of course, this was the helix. This is actually a good one I'll be using here in a minute. I cleaned it up. But anyway, you have two different styles. You have the steel one, and you have the composite or plastic. The plastic is typically used on the plastic flywheels, okay, the, the uh, uh, ring around the, your plastic flywheels and your aluminum. This, of course, is used for the steel ring that's on your flywheels. Now, because time is an issue here in this video and the batteries aren't too great on my camera, I'm going to try to do this as quickly as I can. Um, so forgive me if there's any questions, uh, leave a comment and I'll try to go back and see if I can't help you guys out, okay? But I have a new armature, commutator has been cleaned, okay, just by buffing it with a piece of Scotch-Brite. That's all I've done. Uh, if the commutator is bad enough, you can run the utility knife down the grooves and clean it out. After doing so, I would tell you to use a little carb cleaner and spray the commutator. You can also use your old armature if it's good, of course. But um, with my situation, the other armature was no good. Also, keep in mind to check the windings and make sure that they're not burnt up. If they're burnt up, as I said, they're, they're not going to do you any good. Okay? Now on this armature the top of this armature you're going to find two washers when you disassemble yours make sure you keep them there's a beveled washer as you can see and there's a flat washer the beveled washer goes up goes on first but goes up then the flat washer goes on top like so now your brush holders this is the next crucial part with your brush holders 
I know you're noticing there's pins here that's actually holding the brushes in. You can purchase these pins, but why? You can actually make them, okay? They're not that hard to make. Um, I'll actually show you how to make these. They are an inch and three eighths from here to here, okay? That's from this point to this point. They're an inch from here to here, okay? So keep that in mind, inch and three eighths from here to here, an inch from here to here. Also, there are specialty tools that you can use to help aid and assist you when you're taking apart your starter. I don't really feel that they're necessary. If you're careful enough, you can actually do without these tools. But I am going to mention them. Um, this is the uh, C-Ring removal tool. Its part number is 19436. The C-Ring installation tool is one nine four three five. Oh, and if you need a new C ring, okay, the part number is four six one zero one zero, and you can get that from T U Warehouse. If you need a new pinion gear, which if you saw the starter that uh, the lady had, obviously she needs a new one. That part number. It's 461022. Now since time is pressing upon me, I'm going to turn off the camera at this point and record what I've already um, showed you guys and then I'm going to pick up from there. So I'll be back momentarily and I'll get you the rest of this video.